What's going on guys? Bingo here. I'm with the Dual Factory for another iteration of our podcast. If you guys haven't been here before, it is a weekly series we do talking about anything and everything we feel like about the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, whether that's product releases, meta discussions, uh, anything anything in the game basically. And this week we wanted to take a look at the format or the meta game and ask the question, is this a good meta to play rogue decks? Because we do have about three months of this format left and it's there's not much product coming out. So how is this meta right now looking for rogue decks? And we all have our favorite ones, so we're going to get into that and like why we think they can do well. But overall, just long answer short, I want to say yes, it's a good meta for rogue. What do you think, Joe? I'm still not 100 sure, but I know I have it because uh, I haven't had a lot of time to sit down and look at the competitive aspect because it's been the middle of like starting a new job and uh, moving. I have been playing a lot more for fun decks and stuff like that because it takes a little less thought in terms of uh, actually figuring out how your combos work and you're just all trying to do a simple thing like what is it? I played Shadals and I've played Gravekeepers the past two weeks. And they stand up to meta decks actually really, really well compared to them. I mean, Orcus is still like the most represented, so you have to gear towards that. But I feel like in terms of deck building and stuff like that, even with Orcus being the best deck, you have a lot more freedom in what you can gear your main deck towards because it's not like the overbearing best deck. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, I, I think one of the big reasons is the, the power ceiling of Orcus compared to previous decks it, it, I mean, it's not the craziest thing. It, it's very consistent, right? That's the thing. It can grind for a long time. But unless you just, your opponent opens like Greffer, uh, Armageddon Knight, like going second, you're not going to die. Right. And I think the another huge por- part of Orcus not being the hardest thing to deal with, like not saying I haven't got my ass kicked by Orcus because I have, um, but the cards that we have access to to counter them are extremely powerful against against Orcus specifically, right? You got Super Poly, Lancia. There, I mean, there's like, if you're just gearing towards Orcus, you can have 15 cards in your side deck that is just a blowout towards that one deck, right? Yep. 100%. But uh, one of the nice things, and I think especially that with... Uh, so we've already said that that's the best deck, right? Yeah, easily. So that's what you're most likely going to be like. That's going to be represented and stuff like that. But it's gone to show so far that toning it down has actually done something to the consistency of the deck because the popular version of it seems like it's the pure version. And I've seen people brick with that several times so far after after like a couple local events and stuff like that like i've watched uh was it avery was playing the pure orcus deck and i watched him break because he just didn't he opened one playable play and it got stopped you know what i mean and i don't know how many like uh the past three weeks i've gone against at least one orcus every locals and impermanent seeing scrap recycler (laughs) you know 50 percent of the time just ends their turn it's like a death sentence so like now like that that's really really good for rogue decks because now like you have there's a lot better chance that the deck's going to do well against certain decks like that and there's going to be more representation and stuff like that and like i said you can expand your mind with deck building and stuff like that and then there's some decks out there that are just really really good against that specific type of matchup like for example like i was saying yesterday i was playing gravekeeper yesterday and i'm going to tell you what necro valley's hell of a fucking card and on top of that with royal tribute being at three like I got to do it to a pure Orcus player yesterday where I won the die roll, went first, activated Necro Valley, then Royal Tribute, and he just lost the game. Like, Yeah, and like that that's the beauty of it. Like, Necro Valley aside, because that card is a pain in the ass, like, all the time. I don't care what deck you're playing. <laughs> um, yeah. But, like, you, you see it in deck profiles on YouTube, like, fucking Satellar Knight making eighth place at a regional. And trust me when I say that has nothing to do with Satellar Knight as the deck, right? It's they have a, a decent main mainstay extra deck card in Constellar Diamond that does very well against Orcus because they can't send cards from deck to grave and they you have 
up to three dark monster negations per turn. But the reason that deck did so well is like there's just so many good cards in the card pool that counter not just Orcus but other decks in the meta for going second. The dude was maining like six six or nine hand traps plus three pancreatops plus three super poly. And I 100% tell you because I played that deck at locals this weekend that is strictly because those cards are so powerful and it had nothing to do with normal summon Deneb set three pass. It was kind of like, here's Floodgates backed by a Satellanite engine, is basically what you're trying to tell us. Yeah, it's it's either um, strong traps, because if, if you looked at the deck profile, it was, uh, I'm blinding second with these Evenly's, Ash Blossoms, Imperms, Super Poly, and Panker Tops, three of, three of all of them, so that's 15 cards in the main deck, just good generic cards. And I'm going to side 15 cards for going first, three card demise, three judgment, um, and just more traps, uh, Lancia, Sanctums, Art, uh, Scythe. And basically he, he took a ho- a horrible deck. Trust me, the deck, I love it, but it is not good because it loses to everything. It's a normal summon based deck that you have one play and one play only. And that's just how it be sometimes, man, you know, but, but that's the beauty yeah, of like, ahead. That's the beauty of older strategies. Like those, there's those are strategies that are popping up now because the meta has been toned down. So like, it's like it's like good and bad because like you get a more variety of decks that you can play and that you get to sit around. But it's also kind of bad because now you're just gonna have to de- deal with a bunch of generic like retarded shit. Like there can only be one and evenly matched and pancreatized. And you know what I mean? But I mean like, I would rather have to deal with that all day long than be stuck having to deal with everything's Orcus combo dot deck. So yeah, going into an event is going to be a little bit more of a pain in the ass because you you could sit down and play nine rounds against nine different decks, like you said last week. So you have to play just generic, overarching cards that are good, evenly matched, twin twisters, Lancia for Orcus, Super Poly, uh, just just cards that are going to impact the board state regardless of what your opponent's playing. And like what is it this? Go ahead. Go ahead. But like, what is it this week? Went to locals in a long time. Played four rounds. Only had to play again once. One Orcus deck. That's dope. Like my very first round was ABC versus Gravekeepers, and that was actually a pretty fun match. Believe it or not, because there's a lot of back and forth. <clears throat> yeah, and I, I that in the past five minutes. That is exactly why I think Rogue can shine because. There are enough good cards in the meta. The power ceiling of the meta is so low compared to previous formats where you just had no chance because the advantage gain in the grind game of the top decks was just too much. It, it doesn't matter what your main deck is to an extent that you can play just about open your binder, find your favorite deck, except Zoo, and play. Except Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> the- Dreams never die. But hey, uh, I got a pretty spicy list that does. I'm sure you do. I'm actually pretty excited to see it at one of these points. But I mean, that, that's like the best part about this format is just like there's just so much you can play. And yet, I mean, granted, we don't have dry and broad bull, but I'm sure someone's out there cooking up zoo, not named John Orlando, but we'll get into that later. But uh, I mean, yeah, it's just like it's a lot of fun. Like you can just play whatever you want. Like I've just been sitting here for the past. How long have we been in this format now? About three, four weeks? Uh, yeah, about two, three weeks. I can't tell you how many times I've edited my shit all list to sit there and play geared for the meta. Uh, like, like yesterday, I got to put Gravekeeper together. And the only reason we played it is because I have it all foiled out and I had to convince myself. It took me an hour to convince myself not to play Spy, so I just put that out there. But, uh, yeah, like you can just play stupid stuff like that. Like, what is it? I was looking at... Uh, Something else in my body, and I randomly thought to myself, maybe I'll play Volcanics this week. You know, like, yeah. this is fun. And then there's certain, there's older cards and stuff like that. Like, what is it? Chaos Impact gave us new uh, new Gladiator Beast cards, and that Test Panther is actually, like, insane. Like, I really want to play Gladiator Beast. But, uh, like, Test Panther is insane and stuff like that. And you can put up some scary boards, like, what is it? The uh, Dominant Tate, whatever, the, the, it, the new super rare fusion that came out, and then, like, you can end on that, like, 38 in Appaloosa with three in the gates. Like, these these decks can do some pretty scary things. Yeah. And 
that just like you said with your Shadal list and like flipping through your binder, like I, I still like I, I left your locals about two, three weeks ago and I've continued to play Dark Magician for the meta because like <laughs> I legit I can go to locals and win or go X one with Dark Magician and no like it, it just doesn't make sense. I haven't been able to do that is basically since I started playing. I personally like to think it's because you hate yourself, and that's why I keep playing Dark Magician, but we're not going to get No, the that. reason I do it is because when you beat a Thunder player with Dark Magician, the look on their face is priceless. We never did get to do our Dark Magician versus Blue Eyes matchup, and that was really sad that I think about that. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, that was with Agrippane to uh, when Agrippane was legal, so I had no chance. Getting the sauce on Kirk, what's those? this? <laughs> Where you getting the sauce? We all know Kagula's by. You know, Man, fight. shut the hell up. Fight me right. All right. So, if you had to pick, we'll, we'll just go back and forth. What is your. What are you looking forward to playtesting or just building in this format for a rogue deck and why? Uh, so, I haven't picked it up yet, but I am excited to start testing. Uh, that one will be a lot of fun. I, uh, I mean, what deck you cut out? Invoked, okay. like saying like it's like a staple between our two channels at this point. But uh, I'm excited to play that. It didn't lose a whole. It didn't. I don't think it actually lost anything. Just terrifying. But, uh, just terrifying. I mean, but we already only had one terrifying. But I mean, like its matchups across the board look really good right now. Uh, Orcus is still going to be tough, but I mean. It's only going to be tough because a lot of the stuff that you would side deck against an Orcus deck, side it. I mean, you can and you can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, the Mech Knights got a little bit better. Uh, you got some more stuff to play with. And, I mean, like, you have three Construct now, so you can mix it with it all and makes, like, a pretty solid list because searching Invocation is essentially searching Polymerization, and that's usually what the deck's missing anyway. It's a way to poly turn one. So, I mean... That'll be something really cool to play around with. I'm excited for that. Uh, okay, Are you want to play it pure Mech Knight? Like, what do you? That's one of the that's one of the cool things about the deck. Like, you could play like so many different like subsidized engines in it, or like just any. It, like, it's one of those decks that it needs something to supplement it to make it like competitive and stuff like that. You can play the pure version, but. I don't know how I feel about playing pure with like little traps right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think pure has been good since uh, like right before uh, pendulum format, like right after spiral format. But anyways, the the one deck I want to that I've been messing with for a few days is uh, ABC invoked, and I know that sounds really weird, but. They got Gizmec Yada came out, and that card, like if you normal summon Alistair and then you tribute it off for Gizmec Yada and then normal summon a piece with Hanger on the field, like it's just, it's so nutty, like going first and just Alistair plus Yada plus piece, like as long as it's not A going first, like you usually can do some pretty cool stuff. So I'm messing with that because I think Buster backed by uh, Mechaba is really strong going into uh, like going against any deck right now because like we said there's a lot of decks where you can just stop that one key play right now and their turns over Buster is always going to be generically good though that's yeah like if you if you can survive like let's say you negate something they clear your Mechaba and like you Buster something and then they they don't clear it and you tag out with Union Hanger on the field like the amount of advantage you get from that point, like, is just nuts. I mean, like, you were telling me about that Gizmec. What you can do sounds like it's really, like, busted, so I'm excited to see that. But the Invoked engine, I know Joe used that as what he wanted to do, but, like, Invoke, like, not even just Makaba, like, even going first, if you make Invoke Kaliga with, like, one or two hand traps or, like, something else, like... Orcus can't play through that. Like, they can't. And it's it's just amazing to me that limiting your opponent to one monster effect backed, like, with an 1,800 defense on the field, like, can be enough to just say, okay, your turn, go. 
Like it blows my mind. It's pretty dope, honestly. All right, so I, what is your second deck that you're looking forward to playing? Second deck, second deck. Uh, I'm very excited to play Hero. Okay. I'm, okay. Very, I'm very excited to play Hero. I mean, like, you got all these cards that just make it explosive. It's very, it's solid going second deck right now. Like, this is one of the, like, you just kill your opponent out of nowhere. Plus, like, with Stratos back up to three and stuff like that, like, the consistency is unreal in the deck because you could... Being able just to open that card and, like, just to give you an idea, like, Stratos plus any hero monster is your full combo. Like, it doesn't matter what the hero monster is, as long as you can discard it for Ferris, because that's yeah. what your Stratos is going to search. Like, just Stratos, hero monster, and that's combo. And then, like, you have, like, the three copies of Stratos himself. You have, uh, what's his name? You have three copies of Ecall to go search Stratos, so that's, like, playing six Stratoses in your deck. And then you're also playing three copies of Fusion Destiny which can send Shadow Mist from your deck to search Stratos. So you're basically, if like if you look at your hands and stuff like that, yeah, you have nine cards in your deck already that can allow you to open turn one Stratos, and gen- generally you're going second too. So you have an even bigger chance of seeing it because you get to see that sixth card. Uh, you have ways to kill your opponent now with the new Evil Hero cards coming out, and there's like solid one-ofs to play in your deck. So, like, you don't dilute your consistency by playing one of that you would search off of Stratos or Crusader or anything like that anyway. Like, the deck can do a lot. Yeah, go, going second, that deck just it blew me out of the water two weeks in a row. Um, when I make them go first, I notice they struggle, but I don't think that guy was playing. Um, w- would you consider, like, either maining or siding the mask change to make Dark Law for going first? Because like Dark Law against Orcus seems pretty nuts. Against was, Skies, he not, was he not main decking it or no? Um, I don't know. I didn't ask. Um, I know he. Well, every time he played, he used the effect to search because he sent it off of uh, the fusion card. So I don't know if it was in there. I would have. Well, you, that, generally there. now, like in hero decks, like that's what you're using Shadow Mist for. You're using it to search Stratos or search Ferris or anything like that. But typically, almost all lists play three copies of Mass Change because it's a way to dodge Effective Ailer and it's a way to dodge Impermanence. Plus, uh, because now that delicious, it's a two-card combo. If you open E-Emergency Call or Stratos and or uh, Fusion Destiny, you can open turn one Dystopia Dark Lord Crusader. Oh, no, sorry. It's not Crusader. It's Dread Decimator because the Dread Decimator makes your Dystopia alive. So you open a, you can open a turn one macro dragon basically, and it's a two card combo and it's really easy to get to. Yeah, because uh, dark dark cloud just seems nutty. The thinking about it right now. Twenty four hundred macro on your opponent's side of the field. Does like, uh does dread decimator increase the attack of hero monsters? Yeah, so dread decimator increase uh every hero it increases the attack of hero monsters that it points to. For every hero monster in your graveyard. Yeah, so and that's actually 2,400. Exactly, but that's also key because in that play, like, you increase the attack points of Dystopia, and Dystopia has to have its attack points altered to gain the effect of pop a card. Yeah. So you don't have to burn your Dyna tag that's in the grave that you're going to send off of Fusion Destiny. And that's where, like, that card's actually, like, really important for the combo. But that's a turn one combo you can do. I see some people main deck in Plasma and stuff like that, which... I personally want main deck plasma because I'm not guaranteed. Because like some dude can be cheeky and see where you're playing the previous round and force you to go first. Which there, you got me, guy. You know, you got me. But like the only time I would play uh, dis- plasma is just knowing that I'm going to be stuck going first. You know what I mean? Because like a lot of decks can't play through a skill drain. Like I know Thunder can't do it. Yeah, definitely not. Um, anything else you want to say on your second deck? Anything else I want to say about it? Yeah. Uh, that being said, it is incredibly expensive to play for a fucking for fun deck. Yeah. Uh, Dust of Gold and Malicious Pain still around 60 70 I think they're still holding at their $60 price range and stuff like that. That's but I mean, fucking insane. I have everything else foiled out for it from back in the day when I collected all my hero stuff, so I really just only have to pick up a Dust of Gold. So that's kind of neat. But like, in the general, like, public and stuff like that like even if those were the only cards you had to pick 
like reprints of these cards are actually like starting to pick up in price too. It's actually kind of weird and that you're expensive because the Shadowmas has only ever had two printings and stuff like that. Like it's an expensive rogue deck, but it is a very good rogue deck. Yeah, and it's a fan favorite rogue deck. So like investing into it should long term uh, investing in the max rarity stuff should long term net you either the same amount of money you spend on it or profit. or exactly. Um but for my my second choice, like I want to say Dark Magician, but I've talked about that enough. So I'm going to say Spiral. And that is because Sleeper plus j- just this. So like Phoenix, Sleeper, Griffin is almost game at like any point right now. Like that is so hard for so many decks to play through. And... It, like sleeper by itself can be enough, you know. But you sl- being untargetable and protected by last resorts, what makes that duck so good? Yeah. So you do that, and then you have a skill drain, and uh, the phoenix is usually just to get yourself out of the extra monster zone, or it could be servers. It's just as long as you're not giving them an arrow, uh, is the main point. But like that's just crazy on its own, and like you can still do things like you link with Cerberus, Griffin, Phoenix, and then Sleeper on the end of that. Like, you can still do that, and that's just nuts. That deck's low-key scary, but the, the the biggest problem with that deck, the biggest number one problem, is it loses to a single Colossus. Yeah. And just then, one. But the good thing is, it's a going first deck, so like... You're not trying to blind second into a Colossus game one. So, like, if you win the die roll, at least you can do what you want to do. Yeah, you might lose, but you can side into things like Super Poly, um, Sphere Mode. Well, no, you can't do Sphere Mode and Spiral. Kind of need your normal summon. You 100% need your normal summon. That drones has got to resolve, bro. Yeah, drones, quick fix. I don't know. I, I want to play that deck now so that... When we do get the, uh, I think it's Magician's Soul in the I next think. Legendary Duelist. Um, oh, that's going to be nutty. Yeah, like just thinking about that card. It gets the brick spells and traps out of your hand. It foolishes Master Plan. Like it can do freaking anything. And like it can special the Master Plan you send as a cost. Like it's pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty sick. Like any Spiral Monster plus that is full combo. Like. It's crazy. So yeah, that's that's what I want to do because sleeper's a hell of a card. Um, you don't automatically lose to super poly because you can easily play around it. You only need to end with one dark monster. You're not gonna have a fusion on the field, and it's just a fun fun combo deck that isn't. I mean, Orcus isn't really a combo deck. It's not Dragon Link. Uh, it's not Burning Abyss, which I guess would be another one I would consider, but everyone loves Burning Abyss, so. Exactly. I don't know. I want to pick up a Spiral deck. The only thing that's keeping me from picking it up is I don't want to have to reteach myself Spiral combos. Yeah, they're pretty intricate, and uh, I don't want to say RNG, but they're fucking RNG sometimes. Like, you could just open, like, two of the traps and no way to get them out of your hand or something. I'm a firm believer that you have to be a wizard. Yeah, you have to be a lucky wizard. Hey, man. Does, lucky or unlucky, that's you're still a wizard, so you can play that deck. All right, so that's my second one. What is your third and final one? My third one, if I have to really, really think about it? Hmm. Hmm. I know I keep joking about it and stuff like that, but I really want to put a water list together. Like, really want to put a water list together. I don't know why you don't, man. It's been like three. It's been at least three years since I've pl- I've summoned Eptibus. We just got the new Mercedes cards and Blue Tang and stuff like that. And like, an enemy is a really good card. And like, Mullen Glacius still a really good card. My deck has easy access to Dweller. It has easy access to Pomet to make Toad. It can make Toad naturally. Like, you have all these really, really cool cards, but, like, I just can't help but feel like the deck just doesn't make anything. 
worth making. And that's the problem because the Marine Sus cards lack you making water monsters. Uh, as a lot of your other cards do, and there's not a huge pool for generic water monsters that are good going first, other than Dweller Toad, which that seems pretty re- that seems pretty fucking good, honestly. But like, is this one of those decks that just gets like destroyed by like all generic hand traps? And I have a feeling at some point, Drawing Lockbird is going to get back into the meta, and that deck card just destroys water in general, and then so on and so forth, and it's really hard to play against Colossus. But like. After this is my boy. Yeah, yeah, that that deck I could see being. Uh, I mean, you can definitely take it to locals and just smash face with it, but um, it's it doesn't have a strong going first. So like, you want to blind second, and if you blind second into the wrong deck, you can just lose. Uh, unlike hero, like we were just talking about, where you actually have like a solid turn one play that you can do every single time. So. I mean, I would play it because I'm a believer in play what you want. That's why I brought Zoo to Locals at one time. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Hey. Hey. Uh, anything else you want to say about water? Like I said, bro, never miss my boy. Summoning Megalo for games got to be the best feeling in the world. Like, you know. And then, like, you know, you can just sit there, and when you summon Megalo, you're like, baby shark, do 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 massive. Okay, I'll stop. Anyway. But, yeah. All right. My my third one has to be, I mean, like, Duelist Alliance decks, like, I know I didn't play during that format, but, like, they're all, they all seem super fun. But what I'm leaning towards is actually probably a dino variant uh, because Calamity is fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, it'd be a true true king dino, which I know is not the best way to play it, but I don't fucking care. Because ending with Calamities and Nat Beasts like, is pretty fun. Word. But again, that that is not a deck that is near and dear to my heart, so I'm just messing around with it. And it's a dino variant that I'm messing around with with the Zoo Engine because I made it... I made the deck pop a baby dino or lose. <laughs> so like diagram barrage um, in the main, it's like a thoroughblade and a whip tail. Like as just want to say rat barrage. No, no rat. No rat barrage, but I was promised. Yo, why can't we just have fucking two rat here? We saw what one did. Two rat and a dryden. That's not too much to ask. Change my mind. All right, man. It's going to be all right. All right, so you've had, what, a week, two, uh, three weeks about in Rogue. We're coming up on time, but how do you feel? Like, is it fun? Is it, you know, you wish it was more tier tier zero format? Do you wish it was a triangle format? What are, you, what are you hoping comes out of the next few months? I think it's fun right now. I hope it kind of stays like this and, like, the format continues to, like, mellow out a little bit and stuff like that. To where, like, yeah, Orcus takes up the majority of the field, but it's not, like, overbearing like it is. Because right now, that's what it is. Like, it's it's not overbearing, but it's still taking a majority of the field. Yeah, it's, like, 50, 60% of the field. But then you see, you'll see, see splash of other, like, meta decks and stuff like that in there. And I could just kind of hope, like, the trend keeps going. And it's where, like, the, the majority of the field's, like, we'll say 30, 35% Orcus, and the rest of it's just, like, whatever. So I kind of hope it keeps going in that direction, and then we can just continue to play Rogue or continue to play Tier 1.5, Tier 2 decks, and, you know, just be able to do well at events playing what we want, not what we're forced to play, you know? Yeah, and, like, Tier tier 0 formats, Tier 0.5 formats, whatever you want to call them, like, where it's you play the deck or you play to beat the deck, like, those are fun, but we've had those for... It, it feels like years now. Like, yeah, we've had triangle formats here and there, but, like... For the most part, we've had a lot of tier 0.5 formats. And, like, this I'm excited for where I can just take whatever I feel like it to a regional and go anywhere from X1 to X4, depending on how I play, you know? And that's what I said last week where it's – I think this format is going to be the better player is going to come out on top almost every time. It's going to be a good format. I have a good feeling about it. All right, so any any final words? We're basically at time. 
if you ever if you haven't experienced it, if you get Vision Hero Train, and uh, you know, even though uh, I had high hopes, Douglas French continues to have no sauce. Ah, Doug, rest in peace. He went to a regional today. Um, came back with his head head held high after round four. After round. <laughs> <laughs> but guys if you have enjoyed this Yu-Gi-Oh podcast please remember to check us out next week same time same place 8 a.m on itunes google play 10 a.m on youtube youtube.com slash bingo hd and youtube.com slash the dual factory coming up we we both got situated after our moves which is really what we've been waiting on to start doing regular Yu-Gi-Oh content so we're going to talk about it this week on what we want to do basically you know how committed do we want to be to uploading content like once, twice, three times a week, whatever, and go from there. So if you haven't subscribed, if you like hearing us bitch about certain things, please check us out. But that being said, we I'll see you. A lot of I'll see you next week. Okay, bye.